Hi guys, welcome back. So today we'll be learning about user-defined functions. So before I go too deep into it, let me just show you a bit of a reason why we're going to be learning this and why I'm sure you'll find this really useful. So up until now we've been using some functions that are called built-in functions. We had an entire module dedicated to it. And those are functions that MATLAB or MathWorks themselves have made and they make life really, really useful for us. So for example, when we used the sign function, size function, mean, median mode, those were the built-in functions. Now, why would you want to make your own functions? Well, let's say you had a variable. So let's say x went from 9 to 10. Well, let's go 2 to 2, let's say. And we wanted to figure out what some, let's say, 5 times x squared was for it. And if we evaluated this, it would just evaluate the x vector to negative 2, then 20, and so on and so forth, 2 to 20, and such. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to change what my x was, I could just say x is now negative 4 to 4, and then calculate y again, and then I would do this over and over again. But what if I wanted to calculate many different x's of different sizes and lengths, and I was using it in different parts of my code over and over and over again? Would I want to keep typing in what this x is, and keep typing in this y equals whatever that x is squared, blah, blah, blah? That would become tedious really, really quickly. So, that is what I want to impart to you. So a function is a piece of code that accepts an input argument from the user and then returns to you an output argument that you can use. And they're crucial for making very efficient code because they allow you to avoid rewriting code over and over again. And they just simplify your life because you can have code that you're just writing over and over and over again when you don't have to because you just squeeze it into a function and then just call that function as you need it. So how do you actually make these uh, uh, functions? So like I said before, we've already looked at a bunch of the old uh, built-in functions that MATLAB has. Now, something to note is that uh, user function functions will be stored as M files, and you can't use them if they're not in your current folder. So anytime you make a function, they have to be inside of this folder for you to use. If it's not, then MATLAB doesn't know where it is, and you can't call it. So, what is actually the syntax for it? So, if you look over here, all functions have what are called names, inputs, and outputs. And they're in their own separate M files, just like you have those scripts that we've been writing and they have a .m extension, so too do these uh, user-defined functions. Now, the very first line of every single function you'll ever see starts with the word function. That's how you know it's not a script, and it's a function. And then after that, you have um, a single variable or a list of variables that define the output. Then you have the function name, which is the same as the file, file name, and then you have the variable that I will accept as an input. So here's an example. You start off a script, and it'll say function, and then the name of the output variable, in this case it's just output, just to show you what it means, then the name of the function itself, which should be the same as the name of the file, and then the input, in parentheses. In this case, um, we have one input, which is x, and then this will calculate a single output, which is also called output. Now, the name of your function has to start with a letter, and you, it can also have letters, numbers, and underscores, but you cannot use any reserved names, so you can't use, for example, functions that already exist. So, um, if you were to type in, for example, let me bring it over here. Let's say you wanted to make a function called sign. Well, sign already exists, so you can try doing edit sign, and you can see there's already a function called sign, and you can't edit it. Likewise, if you try to make a function called mean, that wouldn't work, because if you're trying to do edit mean, there's already a function for it. You can see function y equals mean. So function is equal to some output, and then you have the name of the function itself, which matches it, and then a bunch of inputs. In this case, you have more than one input, but that's perfectly allowed. And you can see here, functions get, can get really complicated really quickly, but you're not allowed to override mean. So how do you know if something is allowed to be a function name? Easy. You can use this function called isVarName. So let's say I want to make a variable called, um, let's say, 8, 8 or 8, let's say. So isVarName. And let's say I want to make a very, uh, function called 8. Will this be a valid function in MATLAB? It shouldn't be because we're starting with a number. So let's check this. We get a 0. 0 meaning false. If I instead said var underscore 8, let's say, this is a 1. So this would be a valid function name that MATLAB would allow. All right. So here's another example. Uh, will be closer to something that you probably would write. So you would start off a uh, line with function, then have the output, which would be a result, and then you would have the name of the function, which is the same as the name of the file, and then your input. Simple enough. 
Now let's go ahead and try this out. So let's make a function that calculates the value of a fourth order polynomial. It's similar to what we were doing up here, but it connects into a function. So first off, we have to actually make the M file itself. So remember, a couple ways you can do that. You can right click here, click new. And then over here, you can type in, you can click function and that'll make you a new function. Likewise, you can go here and uh, do new and then function, or you can just type in edit and then the name of the script that you want to make into a function. I'm free using edit, so I'll be using this. So let's call this function polynomial. And because it gave us a little blank uh, screen here, we know that this function doesn't actually exist yet. And you can see the moment I typed it, you have this polynomials uh, M file automatically created. So remember, the very first thing you write for every fu function you want is function. You can see here it became blue because it's something that's very case sensitive and something that is very specific for functions. Now the next thing you can do is your output. So let's say our output is y and let's say it's equal to, remember it's always equal to the name of the function. So polynomial, polynomial, and then the input. In this case, we just want the input to be either a scalar or a vector. So just a single input, that's it. And now you can add a little comment to your function if you wanted to. So you can say this function calculates the value of a order polynomial. Wow. I think that's how it. Whatever. All right. And then you and you cannot have a function without actually having the output. So if you see here, this is underlined. And it says this function returns value y might be unset. And this says input argument x might be unused. So you must always use all the inputs and uh, you and report back the outputs for your function. Otherwise, your function is actually useless. So let's say y is being equal to the example is this fourth order polynomial. So three times x to the third minus x times six times x squared plus one. Done. And if you can see here, everything is green. No warning is found, no underlines or anything. This is a valid function. Now, remember that if you want to use this function, you have to be in the same working folder as the M file that the function is in. So how do you use it? Well, you might be tempted to just click this run button right here because that's how we're running our scripts. And But if you do, good for you for thinking that, but if you do it, you get this error. It says not enough inputs. Error in polynomial line four. This, what was the issue? Well, it says not enough inputs because the input is x, and this says the function failed at this line here, line four. Why would it fail? Well, this function doesn't know what x is. So if it doesn't know what x is, how is it, how is it supposed to give you any values? So all functions have to always take in an input of some kind. So, uh, so you should always, as it says here, you cannot be directly, the uh, files cannot be directly executed by the play button, and you always have to call um, what your variable is. So polynomial four would work. So let's try it out here quickly. So we can go back and do polynomial, but now let's give it a number, let's say four. And what happened here is we told MATLAB, okay, polynomial, the function name, and our input was now four. So MATLAB went to this polynomial function, put four wherever x is, so five, four, so wherever x is, MATLAB put a four, it calculated whatever this result was, and spit out what the y was, because that's the output. And that's how a function works at the at the most basic of levels. And now you could use this function as you as you can any other function. So, for example, because we made this element wise operation here with this dot, we can say, okay, let's say x was uh, let's going from negative ten, negative three uh, to three, and then let's say, okay, uh, let's do polynomial of x. And it calculates all of that. You don't have to say x is this just because the x here is what you're calling it. We, I could have easily had said like dog is negative three and three and asked what the polynomial of dog was. It's the same thing. The function itself doesn't care. All it cares of is that you gave it some input that is a vector or a scalar and it will report back to you the output. You don't have to say that the input is exactly x um, as a variable name and you don't have to save it as exactly y. That's purely arbitrary and it's up to you. As you can see here, that's the exact same thing that I just did. Because we use the array operators for the element wise notation, we can use these. Awesome. Uh, same thing. All right. Now here's another thing that's pretty useful. Remember how if we typed in, for example, like help sign, 
it told us, oh, sine, sine of argument in radians, sine of x is the sine of the elements of x, and then see also blah, 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 blah. These are all uh, assistant comments that you that uh, help you figure out what this function is for. You can have those inside of your own function. So remember when we typed this out, this function calculates the value of 4 4 polynomial um, as the input x. If we wanted to, we could just ask, okay, help polynomial. And then if we do this, it says, oh, this function calculates that. So the very first comments you put in a function are what MATLAB references when you type in help. And this can be really useful if you have these really long, complicated functions that do many different things and a user doesn't, and you don't have any documentation available for it. You just type in help and you can see whatever the person who made the code uh, put as a comment, which is really useful. Now, let's switch over to functions with multiple inputs and outputs. So I'm sure you guys remember uh, when we use, for example, the rem function, which finds the remainder of things, and we gave it the value 5, 4. And it, um, so this is a function, has a name, and takes in two inputs, 5 and 3, and it gave us back an output. Likewise, remember when we use the size function to figure out the size of a matrix, you would give it um, you would give it the uh, matrix in question, and it would give you back out a vector. So it would give you back out more than one output, just to remind you guys. So for example, rem53, and it would give us two. And if we had a matrix, so let's say I make a random matrix that's two by two, and ask, okay, what's the size of this? We gave it a single input, but the output was a vector. So functions can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs, depending on how you set it up. So how do you go about doing this? So let's go ahead and do this one here. So let's say we want to make a function called c. Very fancy name. So edit c. And we have this function c here. So remember, the very first thing you type in is function. Now we want to call this uh, output. Um, oh, actually, um, instead of calling it c, I believe the PowerPoint calls it g. So let me quickly rename this to g. All right, that's fun. The output is going to be c. And remember, you always give it the, uh, the name as this, the name of your function is the same as the name of the file. So g, and instead of having a single input, let's give it two inputs, a comma b. And then say, give us a little comment. So this function multiplies a dot two and b together. A and b plus b plus, plus size. I think that's how you spell it. So all we need to do now is just report what the C is as an output. So C is equal to A dot star uh, dot upper B, dot upper squared actually, and dot star B. And that is it. So we give it two inputs and MATLAB will put A here, B here. And assuming they're the same size matrices, it'll just square one and multiply by the other. So we can go ahead and test this out. Uh, let's test it out first with just a single value. So if I gave it one and two, it gave it gave us two. So one squared times two is two. And if I gave it instead of one and two, two to three. So I gave it a, a single value for a, and then two different values for b. And it gave us one time one squared times two, one squared times two, and then it gave us one squared times three. Easy enough. And if you can look over here. When they use this, they gave both as vectors. So they gave a as a, as three to seven and b as five to nine. And because these were both vectors, um, and we uh, specified using element uh, wise operation here operators with this dot, MATLAB when you gave both of these inputs reported back a vector for you. So we gave multiple inputs and we got multiple outputs. Easy enough. You can see here that being used. Now let's use. Um, now let's go about the multiple outputs, but as multiple different variables. So you can do something like this. So let's say you had you want to create a function that took in a single val a single value or a single vector of values, so a single input, and report back to you multiple outputs. And here's an example of one that does that does just that. So this value calculates the distance, velocity, and acceleration of a particular car for a given value of t, and the initial condition for all three parameters is considered zero. So let's go ahead and write this out, and I'll explain each little part of it just to reiterate the point, even though I'm pretty sure you guys understand it at this point. So let's go ahead and make it. So remember, edit, 
and then the name of your function, motion. Now you'll start off with the word function, so function. And then if we want to have multiple outputs, we need to encase them in an open and close uh, bracket. So the word doesn't matter here, but it matters when you actually call the function. So in this case, we want distance. And you don't have to separate with commas, but just like when you're making those vectors, it's good practice. So D, B, and A. So distance, velocity, acceleration. And this is equal to the name of the function itself, in this case, motion. And it takes in a, a single input T. And just because I'm a little bit lazy, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this comment right here. All right. Now let's go ahead and report our outputs. So our first output is A. And it doesn't matter if you report A first or V first or D first. The function doesn't care. All it cares about is that sooner or later by time, the MATLAB gets to the end of this function, all these outputs are defined somewhere. All right. So A is equal to T squared. And it says V is equal to T to the third power over 3. And D is equal to T to the fourth power over 12. And it looks like you can confirm this. If we took the derivative of this distance function, we would get velocity. If we took the derivative of this velocity function, we would get this acceleration. Remember, just bring this 4 over here, simplify, 3 over here, simplify. So it looks like that's valid. So now you can see we have no warnings, nothing's wrong. So let's go ahead and test this out. So if we said, okay, what is the distance, velocity, and acceleration for, I don't know, let's say 5. If you can see here, we gave motion 5, but we only got a single output. I'm curious. Why is this? And why is it specifically 52.0833? So let's test this out. If we said t is equal to 5, and let's go ahead and just grab this, copy, paste this here, and run it, we get this exact value out. So why did this happen? We, uh, we did have three outputs here, but when we tried to put the value 5 here, motion only reported the first output. So that's another thing that MATLAB does. Unless you specifically ask MATLAB, give me these outputs, you're only going to get the very first output. So because the very first variable we typed here was D, when we didn't specify how many outputs we wanted, MATLAB just gave us the first output. But if we wanted all three of these, we would have to actually tell MATLAB, give me all three of these variables. How do you do that? We just say, okay, I remember when, back when we used sign? So uh, when we used size, so when we said size of A, it gave us two and two, but we could have saved each of the values individually, and we could have said a comma b is equal to size of a, and now we had each of these values saved as a and b. Same thing here. We could have said, let's say distance, velocity, acceleration, and just for good code keeping, separate them with commas. And now we can say motion five, and now you can see distance is 52.0833, velocity is this, and acceleration is this. Alright, so that's mainly what I wanted to uh, stress to you. If you call the motion function without specifying all the outputs, only the first one will ever be returned. So I think that wraps it up for the basics of function multiple inputs and outputs. In the next video, I'll talk to you guys about local and global variables. So see you guys then. Hey guys, welcome back. So now I'll tell you guys about local and global variables. Now, they sound a bit strange, but the best way I can explain it is just to give you an example. So let's take a look back at this uh, g function we made that just multiplies this a by itself and then multiplies by b. So if you noticed, when we called this g, so we did g of let's say 4 and 6, it gave us 96. But if some of you might have noticed, what happens when we call this 4 and 6? Well, MATLAB goes to this function and puts a as 4 and b as 6, and then calculates what c is and gives us what c is. But we didn't get c. We got this ant, which is the default for MATLAB. But why didn't we get c? So it, MATLAB should have given us what the c value was, but if I typed in c here, MATLAB doesn't even know what c is. So that's a bit strange. That's because this c, this a, this v, those are called local variables. They only exist inside of this function itself. They're not something that the outside MATLAB understands. They're specific only to that function. So that is what you call a local variable. If we wanted a global variable, you would have to actually specify that. So here's how you can use a global variable instead. 
let's say, for example, we don't want to specify what A is. Let's say we know A is what A is already, and we don't want it as one of our inputs. But we still need it to calculate something inside of here. So what we can do is say, okay, let's say I know beforehand that A is equal to 3. Awesome. But now, if I wanted to call this here, let's go ahead and erase this A here, and say, okay, MATLAB should now know that my workspace has this A, and I'm just going to say, okay, G of, I don't know, 6, let's say. Oh, but now MATLAB is wondering, undefined function of variable A. That's strange, because my workspace has this A. So your intuition might suspect, make you suspect that this function should just reference this A and then use it, but that's not how it works. Remember, everything that happens inside this function is only local. So all this function knows of is either things that are built into MATLAB or whatever inputs you give it. So if A is not one of the inputs you give it, as far as this function is concerned, that variable does not exist, even though it needs it. So how do you make this A global? All you have to do is type in global and then the name of the variable in question, in this case, A. And if you notice here, this A took on a different color. The scope of this variable is, A is global, changes to its value might span multiple workspaces. So now, because this A is global, this function can actually read it. So now if I type in A, G of 6, we get 96. Because what MATLAB did was it went to the 6, it put B as 6 here, and then when it uh, got down to this A, instead of wondering what A was, MATLAB knows that because A is global, it can access our workspace and say, oh, A is 3, so I'll just put 3 here, and I know what B is because that was on my inputs, and it gives you 96. Simple and easy. And that is a very quick and dirty explanation of local and global variables. And next time, I'll talk to you guys about anonymous functions. See you guys then. Hey guys, so the last thing I want to go over is anonymous functions. Now, what are anonymous functions? Well, they're very similar to the user-defined functions we've been doing before, except a couple of key things that make them different. They're not stored in program files, so they're not saved as separate M files that we've been doing before. They are saved directly to the workspace as a special variable type. And the variable types we've been dealing with have been like doubles, strings, and such, logicals. But these are a special data type called function handles. And you can only have a single executable statement in them. And here's just a quick uh, general way how they're written. So for example, if I want to write the function f of x is equal to x squared as an anonymous function, all you have to do is you have y, so that's your output, is equal to this at symbol, same one you use in email. Then you have your inputs. In this case, we have a single input. And then whatever the expression is you want to evaluate, in this case, x squared. So let's go ahead and just show you it in MATLAB. All right, so just clear see all this. All right, so let's make an actual script for this just so I can show you how it's different. So I'm going to do edit and then say um, anon on testing, let's say. And I'm not going to make this a function. I'm just going to make this a casual script that we've been doing. I'll do a clear, so let's see, close all, basic anon function, test. And then we'll have y is equal to at x squared. And if I were to run this code, you can see we have this function right here showing up in our workspace, and it's a class function handle. And if we want to use it, all we have to do is call it like anything else. So now that it's an actual uh, variable in our workspace, we can say y, let's say 2, and it'll do 2 squared and 4. Easy enough. And because we use this dot element operator here, we can give it a vector as well. So we do 1, 2, 4, let's say, and we get 1, 4, 9, 16. Simple enough. But here's something else that's useful. Now that it's part of our workspace, there are actually certain functions that take in function handles as inputs, as strange as that might sound. One of them is one that I'm sure you guys are uh, uh, used to knowing about, which is called the integral function. So you can actually pass this function as an input to the integral function. So how do you use it? Well, let's say we're dealing with x cubed right now. Actually, let's say, I do this, say integral test. And then let's have this be x cubed. And let's say I want to test this from the range from 0 to 1. So I want to integrate this function right here, this x cubed, from 0 to 1. To do that, you just type in, let me just run this. So we have this function here. There's a function called integral. And it takes in three different inputs. If you can see here, it takes in the function, the x min, and the x max. So the function, and then your, your lower and upper bounds. So in this case, our function is y. And we want to integrate from 0 to 1. And it says it's 0.25. So some functions allow you to um, 
have integral inputs. Uh, some functions allow you to have uh, function, uh, function handle inputs. Integral is one of them. You can also do derivatives, and I believe there are a couple of other functions. But here's just an, that was just an example. Now another thing that you can do is have constants. So as using constants. So let's say you had a function that wasn't specifically defined like this. So let's say you had a function like y is equal to at x and it took in two different constants. So one is a and this was being multiplied by x and then we're going to add on this extra term b let's say. We didn't define what a and b were and they're not inputs so if I were to run this we would still have these uh, have it as a function handle but it wouldn't result in anything. So if I tried to ask MATLAB y is 1 well, well MATLAB would say okay I'll pass this 1 to this function handle but then the function handle tries to evaluate this 1 and it can't give us an output because we don't know what a and b are. So what you can do is you can say beforehand a is equal to 3 let's say and b is equal to 5. If I run this now a and b are defined and I can say y1 or y10 I guess in this case and it'll say it's 35. Simple enough. If you guys remember this is sort of like um, when we were writing our um, let's see where was it yeah, our g function, and we try to make the variable a global. This is very uh, similar, except these uh, these variables are local, are well actually they're global for this script, and we don't have to we didn't have to write global or anything for it. Just because we defined what a and b were before, this function could use them. All right. Now you can also have multiple outputs, so and multiple inputs as well. Um, so let's say you had you want to create this type of function. So a function that was a function of both x and y, and we want to create this. Well, we can easily do that. So let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, and on functions multiple inputs. If you want to make it have multiple inputs, you just say y is equal to at, and then all your inputs. In this case, x and y. Now, I don't want to use y again, so I'll switch this to z. So now this is going to be x squared plus y squared plus x star y. Done. Now, if I ran this, we see our z function here, and it has two different inputs. And if I called it z, let's say 2, 3, first input, second input, we got our output. Simple enough. Now, the last thing I want to go over is what are called arrays of non-instructions. So you, if you have multiple different uh, uh, expressions you want to have in a single function call, but you don't want to specify them as separate files or separate um, lines of code, you can just have a single function name have all these functions inside of them, and what's called an array of cells. And they're separated by semicolons. So let's say you wanted to have a single function name that had this x squared, this y plus 10, and this x squared plus y plus 10 all inside of it. And then we want to figure out, okay, what happens if I just want to call z, let's say. Here's how you do this. So, Alright, so what you can do is say, okay, let's say we want to have our main function be f. So then we have it at x. And actually, uh, what you do is you encase it in a curly bracket. So curly bracket, and then you specify each individual function and then separate it with a uh, semicolon. Similar to how when we were going down to uh, each row for um, our, uh, when we were making our uh, matrices. Similar case here. So at x. And the very first one is x squared. And then the next one is going to be at y. And then this one was the y plus 10. And then you go down to the next line with a semicolon. And then you do at x comma y. And then x dot, dot squared plus y. And then plus 10, I believe. And then that is it for all these functions. Close with a curly bracket. And let's run all of this. Function handle plus is not defined. Where is that? Ah, it was probably because it was right next to it, caused some sort of weird error. So now we define what our f is. How do we actually call it? Well, if we open up what this f is, so 
So if we just call an F, you see F is a three by one cell array. First, first uh, element of it is this uh, function x squared. Second one is y plus 10, or y plus 10. And the third one is, is x squared plus y plus 10. So if you want to call it, all you have to do is do F, curly brace open, which of these three elements you want to be using. So let's say we want to use the second one, close curly brace, and then you give it the input. So let's say I want to figure out what the input of the second function is if I gave it an input of four, let's say. Now it's 14, so four plus 10, 14. Likewise, if I wanted to use, let's say the third function, three, and then give it two different inputs, like two and three, it'd be 17. So third element, that'd be this three, and then the two inputs, two and three, and it would evaluate the third function. Done. Now I don't personally use that um, these multiple arrays for non function but if I have multiple different expressions, I'll just chug it into an actual M file. And I don't usually use these arrays that much. If I want to use them, I'll just chug it into an actual uh, function itself. But they're always good to know that they exist. So that does it for this. I'll see you guys in the next video.